to mind for why I do what I do is freedom and impact. Um, really, it's all for my family, my kids. I have three little kids, a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and a three-month-old. Um, and so really just providing them the life that they could never dream of, right? Providing financial freedom for them, stability in the home, my wife and I, um, being able to go on cool trips um, and just have a great experience just living. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. My guest today on Raising Private Money has recently raised $400,000 in private money for his real estate deals until yesterday when he raised an additional $5 million in private money. And here on today's show, he's going to share exactly how he's done it step by step. Well, before we get started, just a little bit about him. He loves what he does because he has the opportunity to really create what we call win-win situations for everybody involved. He truly believes if you are focusing on serving other people first, you're always going to succeed. His network of real estate professionals can provide options for any situation when he is negotiating with sellers. So his company is a family-owned company that strives to provide great customer service to everyone that they come across even if they don't buy the house from the seller that they're talking to. He has the privilege to serve in the Raleigh, North Carolina real estate market. And he is so successful because he's got a great team that follows his same vision, which is serving first. You're going to meet my guest, Adam Colburn, right after this. Adam, $5,400,000 in private money and $5 million of it just in one day that just came in recently. We can't wait to hear about that. So Adam, you're in the Raleigh, North Carolina real estate investing market. You're raising private money. How long have you been investing? So I've only been investing about a year and a half. A um, year and a half and yeah, the kind of success that you are already enjoying. So uh, what kind of real estate deals are you doing? So we do primarily um, fix and flips and we do some wholesaling as well. Um, this kind of our goals for the next part of the end of this year um, as kind of we continue to scale is to, to build up our rental portfolio as well. So the private money that you are raising, of course, you're using private money when you're paying all cash for your real estate deals. Where are you finding your private lenders? Who are these people? Yeah, so I find my private lenders uh, primarily just through family and friend relationships, um, maybe old colleagues from past work experiences or from school, um, maybe your old aunt or uncle that you only see every few years, just kind of letting them know what I'm doing now. And um, I could provide an opportunity for them to make a high rate of return on their investment capital or their retirement funds safely and securely. And so most people, once they understand um, the value that that can bring to their life, they, they're definitely open to, uh, to talk about it. So how do you start a conversation with people about what private money is and private lending? Uh, typically the way that I start the conversation about private lending is just asking if they are investing at all, like in the stock market, um, in, uh, CDs through the bank, um, just kind of just in passing, just like how you would ask, like, how's the weather? How are the kids? Well, are you investing in anything right now? Like, how's the, how's the market? And, um, just kind of listen to what they say. And then generally they're, they're not very happy, especially in the last couple of years, with the market being um, so up and down. And so I was like, well, I have an opportunity that I'd love to share with you about a way to um, to have safe and secure returns that are much higher than what you're 
typically expecting. Um, and then I just kind of shut up and let wait for them to kind of make their eyes big. I'm like, well, okay, tell me more. Like, you know, I love to start conversations. One of my favorite ways, and I know you've heard me say it, one of my favorite ways to start a conversation about private money is I love did you know questions, right? So like one of my favorite did you know questions is I'll be, you know, talking with somebody and I'll say, did you know there's a way people can earn unlimited money per year tax free? And then I shut up. And of course the answer is no, they never heard of any way <clears throat> that you can earn tax free money. And so when they say no, my follow-up question to that is, have you ever heard of self-directed IRA accounts and self-directed IRA companies? And of course they haven't in most cases. And so that opens up a, a, a great door and conversation to what self-directed IRAs are and how what private money is and how all that works. And Absolutely. so I, I love those conversation starters. Yeah, that's great. So $5 million. From one private lender, tell us the story. Yeah, it's pretty uh, out of the blue, uh, incredible situation. But um, my business partner, he's local as well. He's a, uh, a CPA. And so one of his clients um, had just come into a windfall of money from selling a property to the local government. And so knew that he had this large amount of capital just kind of sitting in a bank account. And so we just had a just a brief conversation. I was like, well, do you have any plans for that? Um, would you want to make it grow? And he's just like, well, it's sitting in a bank account making about 5%. Um, and I guess I'm pretty happy with that. And I was like, well, what if we could double that for you? Um, secured by assets. And he kind of paused and um, said, yeah, I think we can, we could do something there. And so he kind of understood that what we're doing now with flipping houses and, and investing in real estate and, could see the the value in that real true mailbox money um, and just protecting as well as growing this large sum of money that he just came into. Um, and so it was, it was kind of a surprise to me. I was actually working on my bathroom uh, over the weekend and I get, I get a call saying, Hey, um, I think we've got all the money we need right now. It was like, really, and so, yeah, it was a it was a happy surprise to be uh, on my hands and knees all all weekend fixing a leaking toilet to then come and do uh, five million dollars to to put out into the streets. Pretty cool, right? Well, I tell you, I'm so glad um, you were able to share this story because this right here is what I call a rider downer, and that is. CPAs. Now your business partner happens to be a CPA, but for those of us real estate investors that don't have business partners that are CPAs, CPAs are a fantastic resource uh, for what I call um, a rotating revolving door of, re of referrals. I mean, CPAs, uh, as your business partner is, you know, sees people's tax returns. They knows what's going on, know what's going on with people's finances. And so why not have your CPA, whoever's doing your, um, doing your returns and such, why not have your CPA referring people to you as a, you know, another option for getting high rates of return safely and securely. And, you know, Adam, you, we talk about getting returns for our private lenders safely and securely. Talk about what that means. In other words, we're not borrowing unsecured funds. We could if we were raising money for syndication and pooling funds into a, a syndicated fund, um, but we're not. We're not borrowing unsecured funds. Explain exactly what you mean by a secured investment. Absolutely. So for us, to secure the asset that we are lending against, um, we use a deed of trust here in North Carolina. It's called a mortgage in some other states um, and a promissory note, basically promising to pay back the amount that they are lending to us. Um, and so that protects them from if we were to, heaven forbid, get hit by a bus or abducted by aliens, they can they get the asset back to them in a better condition than what we 
originally purchased it for. So they could probably make even more money than the interest rate that we're paying them. Um, and so on top of that, I like to protect my lenders by not allowing them to lend more than 75% of the after repair value of the property. So there's a nice equity cushion for them that if with kind of the market being a little bit tumultuous right now, um, not really knowing where it's going to land as far as values by the time of the end of a project, there's plenty of cushion there that if we did need to slash prices or, or take a, a pretty significant discount, the lenders are always protected. Yeah. And that's what I love about um, our private lending program that we teach other people about it. Speaking of teaching, my wife, Carol Joy, and I right now, we've got 47 private lenders that are loaning us money on our deals, about eight and a half million dollars uh, that we rotate from, you know, different project to project to project. And like yourself, Adam, you know, we don't borrow more than 75 percent of the after repair value but we always secure it. We're not borrowing unsecured funds, even though we could legally. I know some people that do, but uh, I don't do it. I don't teach it. I don't recommend it. And you know, in the uh, intro, when I was bringing you on here to the show, you like myself, we lead with a servant's heart. And what that means is taking care of all of our people and all of our relationships. I mean, this is a relationship business. But how about give some examples of how you lead with serving first in your business? And I know it relates to everything you do. Sure, absolutely. So um, the way that I like to serve first, um, I guess an example of a, of a property that we're kind of working on, I uh, got to get a little bit creative for the situation. So um, a lot of my lead generation has pivoted to working in the senior living space. Um, I've seen it's very much an underserved market here locally. Um, everywhere you look, there's assisted living or independent living um, facilities, but nobody really knows the kind of the inner workings of getting those families transitioned to care. Um, and so there was an individual at a an independent living facility. He's a, the director of, um, of onboarding. And he uh, reached out to me and said, hey, I've got this lady. She's she lives in the middle of nowhere, um, his words, a tiny little town in North Carolina. Um, she, Her whole house has been boxed up for three months waiting to move, but she can't move until she sells this house. And there was three interested buyers came in and lost their financing or something happened that they couldn't get the deal done. And so I reached out to her and just try to get caught up to speed on what the situation was. And she relayed the same information. Like Adam, I'm literally just sleeping on the floor on the, on my mattress waiting to move to the community that I want to live in. I just have to sell this property. And so because it's not really a situation where I would do business, I've never even heard of the name of this town before. Um, we, we looked at it. She, she owned the home free and clear. And so I was able to um, lay out several different options for for her using creative finance. And so we um, came in with the offer full asking price on a seller finance, 20% down to cover her moving expenses and living in the facility because those get pretty expensive uh, from a monthly standpoint. And she was on fixed income. So I wanted to make sure that there was plenty of cushion for her to live in the community and cover her phone bill, her car bill, everything we could take care of initially to move her to care quickly and, and easily. And in the interim, we could have that flexibility for not having to buy the house outright to go and do a little bit of renovation. And then we could sell the home on a rent to own um, through our rent to own program to one of those interested buyers that they lost financing for. And so it was really worked out to be a win, win, win for all parties involved. The community got their their new resident, the individual got the care that she needed and out of the property that was kind of holding her back. And then I was able to find a a family to go and enjoy that property um, kind of like a workaround because they weren't able to get financing through the bank. That's a beautiful story, Adam, as to you're like the orchestra director, right? right. You're like brought together all the uh, parties involved to make that happen. Um, let me dive a little bit deeper on your story. Uh, first of all, so you offered 20% down for her to take back a note and be the seller uh, financing. 
Did you bring your own money to, for that 20% down or did you use private money for that 20% down? In that situation, we actually used a HELOC. So kind of an in-between um, mm -hmm. line of credit. It was a low interest rate. So we could send that out to her, get her into the, the community. And then we could kind of float the payments for a few months until we put the, uh, the family into the situation. And so typically I would use private money, but we've just kind of worked out that we had that line available. Um, at a little little lower interest rate, um, and it was kind of a speed to deal situation. And mm -hmm. so, rather than kind of chasing down my lenders uh, with money on the shelf to put it to work for them, I knew that that capital was available. That's that's good. That's good. Um, my other question is: this whole story, this whole deal, came about by the onboarding director at a senior living home reached out to you to see if you could help. So how did the senior living um, person, onboarding person at that facility know about you and what you do on buying and selling houses? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the way that they learned about me is that I do a lot of um, re like outreach to senior living professionals, um, just knowing that the value that we can provide these families kind of going through these situations to have a quick, easy sale, generally cash as is, um, they'll take a discount on their equity for speed and convenience. And so I was actually quite surprised that I've probably talked to 50 different directors and just professionals in this industry. Um, and every single one of them has said, where have you been all my life? <laughs> um, like they, they needed somebody to offer a different solution than a traditional MLS sale. And so we're able to kind of fill that gap and provide that value for the families. And so I had made a relationship with the gentleman. And so after talking, meeting each other at networking events and stuff back and forth, he's like, here, I got a weird one for you, but um, it was kind of like my tester. And so we, uh, we sent it out and we're still working through that one, but it's uh just like you said, just trying to provide value to all parties. Would you say that um, senior living facilities are now your primary source of lead referral? I think it's about 50-50 right now with that and then just off-market marketing. We do a lot of direct mail and cold calling as well. Um, but I love the idea of free leads, especially warm leads coming from <laughs> referral sources. And so building those relationships is super important to me. Um, I also think that those sellers are generally in need of our services and it's super fulfilling for me to be able to provide that value for those families. Well, let's dive into that for a little bit because that's really, really interesting. I've got, um, I have a friend, not in this state, but elsewhere that this is his total lead source. This mm -hmm. is all he does is establish relationships with senior living facilities and offering what we do. So um, let's go down that path for a moment. When you, how does that work? How do you start the conversation? What is the service that you bring to the table? What does a conversation sound like when you're first starting to talk with someone at the senior living facility? And let's start right there. Who should that someone be? What is their title at the senior living facility? Sure, absolutely. And I'm pretty sure I know the, the friend you're talking about because uh, we're friends as well. He kind of taught me this uh, strategy. But Is um, his it, it first name Max? No, it's actually Philip. Oh, Philip, of course. Yeah, I know yeah. Philip as well. Yeah. So um, getting back to your question, the people that you want to talk to in the senior living industry, um, it varies. It could be the owner of the building. You obviously aren't going to see them very often. I like to talk to the director or the operations manager, because they know kind of like a 30,000 foot view of what's going on in the community. They know their occupancy rates. They know obviously the pricing um, and they're involved with the financial decisions that the families have to make to move into care. Um, a financial director is also a good one because that's literally all they do is look at the numbers and um, they have to have those difficult conversations with families sometimes. And so the way that I reach out to them is um, joining a lot of different networking groups that are specific to senior living. Um, so you have to listen to some presentations about all kinds of things that you you would never sit through uh, on a normal day, but to build that relationship and 
be that person that can fill in the gap for them, um, it's well worth it. And so when I first got started, I was sending just a lot of cold emails to just their their websites where you could kind of fill in an information sheet to say like, hey, I'm interested in, in living here. Um, but I would just frame it as like, hey, I actually don't want to live here, but I want to talk to somebody with your team. Um, ever since COVID, it's not really kosher to just walk in, especially to a senior living facility, um, just with the, the health problems that could arise from that. And so kind of just blanket sending out emails, just like I would direct mail to, uh, to sellers. And so people started responding and, um, and we would kind of jump into the conversation that way. And so in those emails, I would basically say, Hey, I'm, I'm a senior transition specialist. I work with families that are transitioning from their homes to care. And I think I could provide a great service for the community and your potential clients. Um, I'd love to sit down and chat and see what that looks like and just kind of keep it open-ended and um, curious enough that they would want to reach out and kind of see what we're, we're talking about. <clears throat> and, and what did you call yourself? How did you frame your service? You're a senior, what? Senior transition specialist. A senior transition specialist. My best guess is if you start the conversation with you're a real estate investor, you just got the door shut in your face. A hundred percent. Absolutely. <laughs> so when, when you meet somebody, how do you describe what is your service as a senior transition specialist? Absolutely. So the way that I describe it, um, it's typically I, I immediately ask them a question. And so I would say, well, Jay, um, let me first by start and asking you a question. Do you ever have a situation where a family loves your community, they want to move in, but they have to sell a piece of property first and just shut up? And generally, right. and they're, they're going to say, oh, yeah. they're probably going to say yes. Yeah, they're like, I got a whole drawer of people over here. And so um, that's like we we can step in and fill that gap and speed up that process for those families. Um, and then we kind of go into the whole the full on pitch of the benefits of taking a cash as is offer from our company rather than a traditional MLS listing, just from a speed standpoint, we can close in as little as 10 days, even less if it's a serious emergency um, compared to from listing on the market to actually close is generally six to nine months in our market. Um, and so a lot of these families that need our service, the house is not in, great condition. There's some deferred maintenance over the years. And so for them to get that full offer, the maximum amount of money on the MLS, they're going to have to put a considerable amount of money into the property, money that they probably don't have, and they don't want to incur more debt to go and move into a community that costs on average about $6,000 a month. And so we can come in off offer less, but as is cash, we're not agents. So there's no commissions, there's no closing costs. We cover all that. Um, and we can close so quickly that a lot of the families will kind of reevaluate their expectations and, um, can see the value that that quick cash sale can make for transitioning their loved one to care. And I would also imagine you correct me if I'm wrong. I would also imagine part of your service is they don't have to clean out the house. They can leave in the house, whatever they want. You take care of you know, all of that um, and just make it seamless and simple and easy to, to do. Absolutely. Yeah, we actually call it our concierge home buying surface. So it's a total white glove. All they have to do is sign the documents and we take care of the rest. There you go. I love it. I love it. Adam, why do you do what you do? So the two words that come to mind for why I do what I do is freedom and impact. Um, really it's all for my family, my kids, I have three little kids, a four year old, a two year old and a three month old. Um, and so really just providing them the life that they could never dream of, right. Providing financial freedom for them, stability in the home, my wife and I, um, being able to go on cool trips, um, and just have a great experience just living, right. Never have to worry about being paycheck to paycheck or can we afford to do this or that. Um, that's more of the freedom side. And then the impact um, is definitely providing value and service to our community, becoming kind of a pillar in our small little town here um, that we can, we can provide services to those in need. Um, I'm at, one of the things I'm really passionate about down the line is starting like a, a business development um, 
course or like an after school program for high school and college kids to kind of make like an, like an incubator of ideas for people that are have the entrepreneur spirit or even don't have that spirit but want to hear about more than just the traditional go to college, get a job, be there for your whole life and then retire. Um, because I didn't really have that. I kind of caught the entre- entrepreneur bug late in life um, or at least kind of followed that path more um, openly as I got older and started having kids. Um, interesting how that worked. But yeah, a freedom and impact is really what it comes down to for me. Well, you know, since you mentioned the word impact, clearly that is one of my big whys. My passion is one of my passions and I have many. One of my passions is sharing with other real estate entrepreneurs or new ones that want to learn what this private money thing is and, and, you know, how that works. And so I have uh, recently written a new private money guide that will get you, if you're a new real estate investor, or maybe you're a seasoned real estate investor and you just want to raise uh, private money or raise a much more private money. Well, my new private money guide is called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Business and Help You Build Incredible Wealth. This guide will get you on the fast track to getting private money, just like Adam has shared here on the show. You can download it for free at www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. Again, you can download that at jconner.com, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. Adam, I tell you what, what an amazing story that you have been able to share here with us. Uh, I appreciate you coming on here so much. And I'll give it to you for the final piece of advice. Any lessons learned that you want to share or a lesson learned that you would do different today than how you started out or any advice you'd like to share before we close out? Sure. Absolutely. One advice, a uh, piece of advice I'd like to leave is just um, take the action. If there's something that you're passionate about or even just mildly interested in, you'll never know if it's something that you actually want to pursue unless you take the action. And so um, for many years, I was a professional photographer um, shooting real estate, like for MLS photos for um, just realtors and was always fascinated by the idea of flipping houses, but never really thought it was attainable and just left it at that until about two years ago when I kind of made the leap into real estate investing. And now it's kind of skyrocketed our success. And so um, you'll never know if it's going to work out or if you even like it unless you take the action. I love it, Adam. Thank you so much. There you have it. Another episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and I really appreciate the shares. Think of someone that you believe would really get a lot of value out of this episode and share it. Also, be sure to subscribe. Uh, if you're watching on, you, uh, on YouTube, be sure and click that bell so you don't miss out on the other any other upcoming amazing episodes. If you are listening on iTunes, be sure and follow uh, and the same on Spotify. So here's to taking your business to the next level. I'm looking forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.